view. And as Tina said, today we're going to be talking about Joomla security. So before we begin, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Daniel Kanchev, and I created my first Joomla website more than seven years ago. Since then, I have been using the platform for various different projects, and I'm really fascinated by the things that you can do and how easy it is to, do, to use the Joomla CMS. So more than four years ago, I started working for SiteGround, and three years ago, I became one of the technical support supervisors here at SiteGround. So I have been working on various site optimization and site security projects and our in-house software. So I will tell you more about some of them during the presentation. In my spare time, I love to travel the world with my friends, and I am also addicted to extreme, but unfortunately, not so secure sports. So what's the common thing between extreme sports and your Joomla website? It's fun to, for example, practice snowboarding, but it's also very dangerous, and it's not very fun to get injured. That's why I use protective gear, such as helmets and protective pads. It's the same with your Joomla website. It's fun to create a website and use the system, but it's not so fun to get hacked. So during the session, I will tell you how to use different security tools to enhance the security of your platform, of your Joomla website, and basically to avoid such accidents. Before I tell you the technical details, I would like to mention some important things about who should care about security. The answer here is that usually the Joomla end users, and I mean you, the people who use the system, are in between the application extension developers and the hosting providers. So basically, when the Joomla website is hacked, the hosting providers most probably will blame the application developers that their code is insecure, and that's the problem. On the other hand, the extension developers will most probably blame the hosting provider that their server setup is insecure. And as a result, you basically don't know who to believe and what to do. The answer here is very simple. Everyone should care about security. It's not just the developers, the system administrators who manage your servers or your hosting provider. You should be the key point here and actually take advantage of the fact that you can communicate with both the developers and your hosting provider. You should be the one that contacts the hosting company and asks questions about their setup and if they care about Joomla-specific settings for security. You should also check the Joomla developers, the Joomla websites, and the extension directory of Joomla for trends and previews about the extensions that you're using. So for example, if you're using an extension and many people are pleased with it, then it's okay. But if you're using an extension which has been reported to have various security holes, then you should probably uninstall or disable this extension. Why should you care about security? It's not only to avoid hacked images and spam commands on your website. The real deal here, here is to actually keep the trust of your clients and protect their personal information. For example, if you have an e-commerce web shop which is based on Joomla, you don't want a hacker to be able to access the personal details of your clients their credit card details, and other information. In addition, if your website is healthy, you will avoid substantial data loss and downtime. Many hosting providers actually check Joomla websites on a regular basis. And if they notice that the website is hacked, they can close your account and tell you that until your website is not cleaned, they will not re-enable it. So that is important. You don't want your clients to lose their trust in your products and they don't want to actually visit such websites. 
if I visit the website and I see that it's hacked, I will most probably never do it again. Another thing is that when a website is hacked, Google and other search engines detect this. And when this happens, you can search your domain name in Google and you will actually see the hacked content, the spam comments, and other cynical, similar and not so pleasant things. So, for example, one of our clients was recently hacked and we managed to clean the website for just several hours, but Google has already cached the information and they needed like two months to remove the cached content from their servers. So, you should keep this in mind when we're talking about security. So before I tell you how to actually protect your website and what server setup is important, I would like to share how actually hackers can attack your site and what methods they use. There are four different ways to attack a website and they can be divided in the following four categories. The first way is to actually perform the so-called social attack. A hacker can, for example, call one of your colleagues who may be a content editor for your website and tells him, hello, I'm from SiteGround and there is a problem with your account. So then he can ask for the login details and if you're not familiar that hosting providers usually don't do that, your colleague may provide the username and the password and the hacker will then be able to access the website just like that. Another thing is that hackers can attack your own computers that you're using to manage your website. And when they do this, they actually may install viruses that can send your personal information directly to the hacker. In order to protect yourself from these types of attacks, there are two things. You can install antivirus software on your computer and you can actually discuss security with your colleagues and your coworkers. The third thing is the connection between the devices that you're using to manage your website and the server which hosts your website. For example, an attacker can snoop the network for login details. And if you're using an FTP client to access your website, then the hacker may easily see your username and password. The only solution for this problem is to always use encrypted connections. For example, you should use FTP over SSL and SSH over SSL and for, for example, you can install SSL on your domain name. Last but not least, it's the web server and the application that you host on it. In our case, that's the Joomla application. It should be protected. So basically, the other three types of attacks are not something you can do much about. It. And the scope of our presentation is the server, how to set up it correctly and how to secure the Joomla application itself. So from now on, I'll be talking about how to configure the server or what hosting companies to choose and what to look for when you are transferring your site to another hosting company or you're building a new website. After that, we will provide some technical details how to actually secure the Joomla CMS itself. So the bottom line here is that security is not something which should be enforced only by the hosting provider or by the developers of the application that you are using. Everyone is responsible about security and you are the one who should enforce security policies on your end. You should be able to make the connection between your site, the hosting provider, and everyone else which is involved in your site development process. Security is a process. And I say it because security is not something that you install on your website and you forget about it. And then your website is unhackable. There is no such thing as an unhackable website. That's why you should be aware that you have to constantly monitor your website and do various things and use various tools to improve the security. You should be able to check the vulnerabilities and to communicate with your hosting provider to keep your site secure and locked down. 
The process starts with your server setup and you have to be sure that it's right. So basically what I'm going to tell you now is a list of recommendations for your server so that the ones who manage your own servers you should get familiar with these technologies and try to implement them on your servers. If you are on shared hosting servers and you don't manage your servers, then it's a good idea to actually ask your hosting companies if they use the following technologies. The first and most important thing is to always update your server software. And here I'm talking about your web server, your FTP server, your email server, etc. That's a crucial thing. And you should do it on a regular basis. Or at least your hosting company should do it anytime a new version of a new service is released. The next thing is to always harden the Linux security kernel. I'm talking about Linux here because most probably your Joomla application is hosted on a Linux based server. There are also Windows servers, but the majority of hosts use Linux for Joomla hosting. So the Linux kernel is the core of the operating system and it's basically secure, but you can actually enhance the security by applying some software patches, such as GR security. The next thing is to cheroot processes. But what exactly does this mean? This means that if you have a PHP process, this process should be limited to see only, only your files and nothing else on the server. So if you have 100 Joomla websites, then a hacked website will not be able to access the rest of the sites. The same goes for the web setup and the PHP setup. You should always make sure that you use technologies similar to SuExec and a secure PHP setup such as FastCGI. If your hosting provider provides shell access or the so-called SSH to your clients, you should ask them if they are doing something on a server level to restrict the shell access. That's crucial because even if they root processes, unrestricted shell access is the same as giving access to the whole server to someone who has SSH. The last thing is to always disable or remove unused services. For example, if you don't need an FTP server, just uninstall it. It should not be there. So if you're a system administrator and you manage your own server, you can use the following software solutions to easily set up your server and make sure that it is secure. They are available for hosting providers also, and you can ask your hosting providers if they are using them. Recently, we have read a report that more than 90% of the hacked websites are actually accessed and affected by the web server. So what, what does this mean? This means that most of the attacks are performed via the HTTP protocol, and the rest are for example, through an FTP service or cPanel or another service. But most of the attacks are performed via the web server. So you should basically protect your web server. It doesn't matter if you're using Apache or Nginx or another web server. It doesn't matter. And the ultimate solution here, which is the de facto standard for the hosting industry, is called mod security. Mod security is an application level firewall which sits between your application, your Joomla application, and the incoming requests. It uses a list of rules to scan all of the requests and then filter the malicious ones. It is difficult to um, write your own rules and to filter the malicious requests. And that is why I have provided the following links that you can access and download predefined configuration for mod security and then it is really easy to install it and enable it on your server. Here at SiteGround, we actually create our own rules and every week we check a list of known vulnerabilities for Joomla and other platforms and based on the vulnerabilities from the last weeks, we create our own security rules for mod security to block 
some of the new attacks that are available for Joomla websites. So now that you have your server set up, let's protect Joomla. So Joomla is a secure platform, but we often install extensions, additional templates, plugins, and we forget to update the platform. And if we don't update the platform and all of the extensions, it's almost sure that sooner or later, your account and website will be hacked. So our first advice for you is to always update everything, the Joomla core and all of the extensions that you have. That is important not only because you will get new features, but also because the developers usually check their code even if there are no security vulnerabilities. Good developers do this to make sure that they have not made any errors during the development process and to ensure that their extensions and the Joomla core provide all the functionality in a safe manner. When we're talking about updates, it's important to say that many people forget to do it just because they don't have time or they don't know how to do it. That's why here at SiteGround, we have decided to create our own auto update tool and it is available in our cPanel. The idea is that when a new version of the Joomla CMS is available for download from the official Joomla website, our tool detects your sites and it will automatically update your Joomla application. That's useful because if you forget to do it, you can be hacked within a matter of hours or days. You can also enable or disable the feature for certain websites. So far, this still only upgrades the Joomla core, but we are working to enhance it so that it will be able to also upgrade additional extensions for our clients. The second thing that we would like to share for you is that you should always start with some basic things that you can do for your website. When you're installing a new Joomla website, you have to change the default admin username and use a secure password. Because if your login details are not secure enough, then a hacker can easily guess your login details and access your administrative area. So how to use and how to choose a bulletproof password. There are many advices available out there on the internet, but I would say to avoid password generators. And I would say that not because your password will not be strong enough, but actually because you will not be able to remember the password. And sooner or later, when you use different passwords for the different websites that you're using, you will have to install a password manager. And the password manager is nothing more than a, than a database of your passwords. And to access this database of passwords, you should use another password. And if I'm a hacker and I am able to crack the password for your, for your database manager, then I will have access to all the passwords that you have. So that's not a good idea. But how to create a password which is both easy to remember and difficult to crack. So don't use common words as well, such as admin, admin123, or password, because these lists, these passwords are part of databases that hackers use and they will be able to access your site in a matter of seconds. You should also avoid personal information such as names and significant dates. For example, I would never use Daniel123 for my own Joomla website. Here's my advice for the perfect password. I use the same technique for all of my websites and so far I have not experienced any problems. You can choose a favorite movie quote or a large phrase from a book that you have recently read. And when I say a favorite, keep in mind that it should not be famous. It should be something that only you know. 
and only you are aware of. So don't use I'll be back from the Terminator, for example. This is a quote from one of my favorite movies and it is we all go a little mad sometimes. Here I would like to say that the first one of you who actually guess the movie would get a free trial account on one of our servers. But be patient, don't Google right now because there are some more tips about the password and how to actually make it bulletproof. You can then take your phrase or the movie quote and add punctuation symbols and capital letters to it. You can also remove some of the white spaces and instead of a white space, write a number. So you get a password which is easy to remember because only you know the phrase and is very hard to guess by hackers because it also includes different symbols, capital letters, white spaces and numbers. So far we have learned how to secure the, the login of uh, your Joomla application by choosing strong passwords and changing the default admin username. Another thing that you can do is to add a second layer of protection and password protect your administrator folder. You all know that when you type your domain name slash administrator, you will see the Joomla login page. And hackers can actually create automated scripts that can access the same page and try different combinations of users and passwords. And if they do that, they will eventually guess your password. But you can add another layer of security so that when you type your domain name slash administrator, you will see a pop-up screen by your browser and you will have to type another combination of a user and a password to actually see the login page of the Joomla CMS. So you can do it from your C panel because that's the most popular panel nowadays. And you have to log into C panel, go to password protect directories and select the administrator folder. When you do this, you will see the following screen. You should type a username. In my case, I have chosen Daniel and a strong password. You should select the password protect this directory and save it. That's all. From now on, you will have two-layer authentication on your Joomla administrator folder. You can go even further and restrict the admin area access by IP address. So the idea here is that if you know that you will be accessing this particular website only from one computer and you're using a static IP address provided by, internet, by your internet service provider, you can actually tell the web server that this administrator folder, folder can be accessed only from certain IP addresses. And to do it, you have to create a .ht access file and add the following code to it. Deny from all, allow from your IP address. To find out your IP address, you can simply visit the website listed here on the slide, what is my IP.com. You can actually allow access from more than one IP address and to do it, you can edit the HT access file via the cPanel file manager. The next thing that I would like to talk about is your permissions and ownership, the permissions and ownership of your Joomla files and directories. If you're hosted on a web server which is properly configured, you should never ever use 77 permissions for your folders and files. If you have to use 77 permissions, this means that something is not wrong, is not right. And the server is most probably incorrectly configured. It uses a strange PHP setup or an extension that you would like to use are not properly developed because that's not normal when you use for example, FastCGI and SuExec. The recommended permissions for your folders and files are 755 for folders and 644 for files. 
You can also change the permissions of the configuration.php file of Joomla to 444. And this is another, another step and enhancement of the Joomla security because even if someone knows your login details and can access the configuration.php file, the hacker will not be able to edit it unless he or she doesn't change the permissions of the configuration.php file. To fix the permissions, you can access the cPanel and go to the file manager. So when you do this, you will see all your files and all your folders listed. To change the permissions, you have to simply select one of the folders or files and then click the change permissions button. You will see this pop-up screen and you can actually type the numbers and the boxes and click the change permissions button. So that's it. If you have a problem with permissions, always set 755 for folders and 644 for your files. Now the time to mention that if your host is properly configured, you would most probably never have to do it because when a new Joomla is installed, the files and folders should be automatically set to use these permissions. The sixth advice that we have for you is to keep all of your PHP scripts inaccessible from the web. Joomla uses only two PHP files to work properly, and they are the index.php file in your web root folder and the index.php file in the administrator folder. Everything else should not be accessible via a web browser. So in order to deny access to such files, you can create HT access files and add the following code to them. So basically this code tells the web server that if someone attempts to open a PHP file from for example, the media folder of your Joomla CMS, this request should be denied. And you can add this code to an HT access file in the media folder, the libraries folder, the logs folder of your Joomla application, the language folder, and basically all of the folders that I will show you on the next slide. There is a possible problem here. Some Joomla extensions sometimes create extensions that have to access certain PHP files from certain directories. And the following HT access code may break some functionalities. So my advice is when you add this code to check your website and if you have an extension which doesn't work or you have a problem with your slideshow or your custom menu or your template, just contact the extension developer and tell him that you have added the following code and there is a problem with his extension or template. You will be surprised that Joomla extension developers will be very glad to assist you and they will actually fix the issues that they have with their extensions. They will change the way the extensions work. To change this in File Manager, here we have highlighted some of the folders and our experience shows that these are the folders that are most commonly attacked by hackers and they try to upload PHP files in them and then execute them from a web browser. For example, recently one of the websites that we have cleaned on our end had a PHP File Manager in the images folder and you don't expect a file manager to be in the images folder. There is no place for such files there. So when you add this code, even if the hacker manages to upload malicious codes to such folders, they will not be able to execute the files and access your personal information. This slide is for those of you who are, who are still using Joomla. 1.1.5 and older versions and when I say older versions I mean 1.0 which is practically dead now and I would like to say that there are 
some security issues with these with these versions of Joomla that you have addressed immediately if you are if you have not done so. So for example, when you install a new 1.5 Joomla installation or you have a 1.5 Joomla installation, the default user is admin. You have to change it because hackers are aware of this fact and they can actually guess just your password. They don't have to guess your username. So if you're using admin for your username, change it. The chain, you have also changed the default DB prefix for your website. For Joomla 1.5 websites, the default prefix is JOS. And this issue has been addressed in newer versions of the platform. And right now, 2.5 and Joomla 3 generate a random string of characters for the database prefix. If you uh, are hosted on cPanel server, you can change the prefix from your PHP My Admin tool. And if you really would like to learn how to do it, uh, you can uh, check some articles in our knowledge base or uh, just send me uh, an email after the presentation. We will be glad to provide detailed instructions, but that's right now not in the scope of the presentation. The next thing, which is very important, are the Joomla extensions. Because many of the websites that we have seen hacked have been hacked because they use outdated extensions. Even if you have the latest version of the Joomla core platform, you can install an extension and forget about it. And after six months, this extension, for example, becomes vulnerable. And then all of a sudden, your website is hacked despite the fact that you're hosted on a secure server and you're using the latest Joomla version and you have password protected your admin area, but after all, it comes down to one vulnerable extension. So you can check the extensions at the following two links. The first link is the Joomla vulnerable extensions list. This is an official list which is maintained by Joomla.org and it provides information about all the extensions that are vulnerable and what versions of these extensions are affected, how to resolve the issue, and if there is a software patch for a particular problem. The second link is the National Vulnerability Database, and it is maintained by some security experts that also check Joomla websites. So I know that it is um, difficult to check the websites all the time, so I don't do it, and that's why I know it should be automated. And there is an easy way to do it. There are RSS feeds that you can actually check or add to your browser's news to see the latest vulnerable extensions. And you can add them directly to your Joomla admin area. So. When you access the Joomla admin area, you will see the following panel which will provide information about the latest problems with the Joomla core and the Joomla extensions. As you can see, the information is pretty well structured. You will see the affected versions of the applications, the affected versions of the extensions, if there is a security patch or if there is another solution and how to mitigate the problem. It is very easy to create this panel and see it in your Joomla administrative area. And here is the link to our tutorial which will help you to create this custom feed which you will be able to use to get in touch with developers and update the extensions that you are using. The next important thing is to remove unnecessary information from your website and provide additional protection through HT access rules. Those of you who are experienced with PHP know that it is not only the Joomla system which is vulnerable. Sometimes there are problems with PHP or MySQL or other services. And as we all know, Joomla is a PHP 
MySQL-based platform. And you have to make sure that you are using a secure PHP version, like PHP 5.4 or PHP 5.3. Hackers usually check the version of PHP installed on your server. A, and they do it by using some techniques that allow them to see information about the PHP setup and about your Joomla website. So you can add rules to your HT access files to prevent this. Here is the link and this link actually goes to Nicholas website. He has created some very nice rules that you can add to your HD access file. It's called his master HD access file and it will help you to remove sensitive PHP information, to remove uh, information about your Joomla website, and it will block requests from automated tools that hackers use to check your site, the extensions that you're using, and the version of the Joomla platform. Last but not least, you can enhance the security of your, secur the security of your Joomla CMS by using additional security extensions that will actually block and identify some of the most common attacks. The first one, called JHack Guard, is our own solution and it has been developed by our senior support team and tested on many websites. It is an intrusion detection and prevention system. It blocks some of the most common attacks, such as SQL injections, cross-site scripting, and inclusion of arbitrary files. The other tools, the Akiba admin tools, provide uh, other functionalities, and they also allow you to check and monitor your website. So my advice is to install them, check the functionalities that they are providing and choose the one which suits your needs best. I would like to now show you what is an SQL injection and to explain how it works. An SQL injection is something very simple. By default, an SQL injection uses, for example, a search form or a component which accesses your database to tell the Joomla application to execute a command on the database which will alter the structure or show some certain information to the hacker. So imagine that you have a Joomla website with a search field and this search field allows you to actually check some of the articles of your Joomla application. So when you type, for example, flowers, you get all the articles that include the word flowers. But if the input is not sanitized, then a hacker can actually type an SQL command in the search field and the application will execute this command. And the command which I have added here will delete all of the users from a certain database. Now, I would like to say that this is the default Joomla search field and this search field is not vulnerable to attacks. It is just an example to show you how an SQL injection attack works. So basically the default search field is not hackable of the Joomla platform, but there are some components that are hackable. And the following link will actually open such website on your end. If you click this link, you will perform an SQL injection attack. And it is against a website which uses an outdated version of a Joomla component called RS files. So what you see, what you will see on your site is the admin username and the password, which is here encrypted. It's actually a hash, an MD5 hash. But if a hacker sees this, he can then take the hash and practically compare it to a database of known hashes and then boom, he got your login details. He can access your site and do whatever he wants. So our plugin, JHackGuard, is able to filter such requests. 
And not only SQL injections, it filters remote, remote file inclusions, remote code executions, cross-site scripting attacks, and a list of other attacks. You can get the plugin for free, and this is the download link, and install it from the extensions of your Joomla application. Here is one of the most important things that you will have to do to protect your website. The three rules of backups is to always create backups, to regularly create backups of your backups, to keep the backups on a separate server different from the one which hosts your website, and to test your backups. So, even if you have a backup and you store it on the same hard disk or the same server which hosts your website, what happens if this server goes down? For example, what happens if the hard disk is damaged? Then you have no backup and you cannot restore the site on another server. Or what happens if you create your backups manually? You will create a backup today, tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, but after some time you be tired of it and you eventually stop making backups. So automate the process. And to do it, you can ask your host if they are doing backups for you. So you can have access to their backup servers and download your site. Or you can use the Akiba backups component, which is most probably one of the easiest way to create a backup from the component, download it to your computer, or even upload it to Dropbox. So this way you will be sure that you have your backups and if something bad happens, you can restore your website. The other thing that is important is to always test the backups. So you should be sure that your backups are working. Do not just take backups. You have to test them and make sure that your website will work if you restore it from one of the backups. Unfortunately, even if you do all of these things and you have backups, one day you may be hacked. It happens. But there is no need to be afraid of this. It happens to everyone. Don't panic. That's the first rule. Don't panic. And you should not panic because at least you have backups. You can restore your site from a working backup. If you panic, you will most probably lose clients and take ages to restore your website and its functionalities. So here at SiteGround, we provide a service for cleaning affected sites, removing the malicious code, and then finding the security holes, fixing them for our clients. And we have a disaster recovery plan which consists of the following six steps. So the first step, which most of the people would say is strange, is to create a copy of your hacked website and all available work files. The idea is that these work files and the malicious code provide enough information for a security expert to actually find out how your website has been hacked. So once you do it, you can move the hacked site to a location or a hard disk which is not accessible publicly. And you can then restore the site from a clean backup. When you do it, your site will be up and running. But that's not the end of the story. Because you have been hacked and you obviously have a problem with your website. Simply restoring the website will not resolve the problem. You have to find what has caused this problem. So the next step is to quarantine your site by enabling the Joomla maintenance mode. At this stage, everyone will see a temporary down page for your website and only you as administrator and your hosting provider or developers will be able to access your site and analyze the work files. So the next step is to check the works for the malicious code and for some details about how the attack has been performed. If you follow the first three steps, you are good to go, contact your hosting provider and say, hey, 
My website has been hacked. I restored it from a clean backup. I created a copy of the hacked files and I have all the work files that you need. Please tell me how did they hack my website. And if you're using a reputable hosting provider, they should be able to find the information in a matter of 15 to 20 minutes maximum. They will be able to tell you how the hackers accessed your website and what they did to infiltrate the system. The final step is to resolve the security issues and then re-enable your website. So when you do it, your site will be accessible again and your visitors will no longer see the maintenance page. By doing this, by doing this you will avoid the unpleasant situation when you restore your site from a clean backup and Eventually, after two or three hours, the site is hacked again. That's probably one of the things that will affect your clients and visitors the most, and they will never access your site again. Now I would like to mention some of the things I have already explained, and this would be the end of the presentation. And uh, the most important things to remember is that security is about making it harder to infiltrate. You cannot make your site unhackable. It is impossible. But you can actually harden the security and enhance it in such a way that most of the hackers out there, more than 80 or 90% of them, will actually stop trying to hack your website because it will be too difficult for them you can always be sure that there will be a hacker which will be skillful enough to hack your website. But he will most probably try to hack a government website or a bank website. And if your website is secure enough and you constantly update all the extensions and you add different security rules, you will be sure that your website will be attacked much less by hackers and attackers. Security is an ongoing process. You cannot simply install several extensions, add some code to your HD access files, and then you're done. That's, that's not the truth here. The truth is that you have to constantly check the extensions that you have, the, the Joomla core system, and educate yourself about what is going on with the platform and how extensions are developed how your hosting company cares about security and what they're doing to prevent, for example, popular attacks and how they're developing software on server level to protect your websites. And this leads to the next point, which is everyone is involved. It is not just the developers or the hosting provider. You are the one who should contact the hosting provider and make the connection between the platform developers and the hosting providers. Hosting providers should work closely with extension developers to improve the Joomla system and to provide good hosting and quality hosting services for Joomla website. You have to look for hosting providers that are Joomla specialized. So that's it everyone. Uh, I'm glad that I was able to tell you about the Joomla system and how to secure it, and I will be glad to answer your questions now. All so, right, Tina, thank you very much, it. Daniel. Um, um, I think that we have so many questions here, I, I'm already losing track of them. But okay, so uh, I hope that we get uh, Nicholas and, um, and you uh, to both answer questions. So I'm going to start with uh, the first one. We had a couple of those. So you mentioned and you recommended four Joomla security extensions and a few people asked if those four can work together. Uh, and also we had questions, uh, people asking whether Jayhawk Guard and Akiva admin tools can be used together uh, or that will cause uh, performance degradation. So what is your take on that? Well, I would say that many of our clients use both Akiba 
and uh, Akiba admin tools and Akiba backup and our own GitHub guard and their sites have absolutely no problem. The performance is not affected at all because the two extensions are very well developed and they do not affect the loading speed of your websites. So we have not experienced any issues and I would also like to say that uh, I have tested uh, the other extensions that I have listed and I believe that uh, no problems should occur but if some of the people use the extensions and they are all enabled on their websites and they have a problem we will be glad to to assist them and to resolve any possible issues but all in all you should not experience problems and you can actually install several security extensions that will enhance the security of your website even more. All right, great. And another question about Akiba backups, maybe Nicholas can answer that one. Uh, does Akiba backup only uh, save the files or does it save the Joomla database as well? Akiba backup is generating a full site backup, which means that it includes both the database and your site files. And actually, it also includes the restoration script itself. So uh, the backup is a package that you can use to uh, restore or copy your site to any server. Awesome. Great. Uh, so another question, a very good one. Is there any tool for checking and verifying a site is clean? For example, if you had been hacked and then cleaned it, it would be good to be able to verify it and check you hadn't missed anything. Do you guys know of any tools that do that? Yes, I know there are such tools, but um, uh, I would like to say that there is no 100% guarantee that such a tool will actually tell you that your website is absolutely clean. For example, there is a web-based solution called uh, Sukuri, so Sukuri Site uh, Security Check, and uh, you can type your domain name. They scan your website uh, by simulating a browser connection, and uh, they're very good at uh, identifying malicious code. And another service which is actually integrated with Sukuri is uh, one of the extensions that um, has been recently developed and it's called uh, Watchful. So it is an extension for your Joomla application. You can install it and it uses the Sukuri algorithms to, to scan your website. And um, today I was talking to Nick for another uh, tool that we were discussing. Could you mention a little bit of information about that one too? Yes, my recommendation is myjumla.com. Uh, it is a, a web service which uh, also installs a connector on your Joomla website. It's uh, Joomla specific. Um, unlike Sukuri, it doesn't only perform a superficial scan of your um, uh, of your files over the web, it actually uh, reads the entire PHP files and all other files on your account and checks them for potentially malicious code. Uh, just as you said, no security solution is 100% correct and what you should be aware of is that sometimes there are false positives which means that the file is misrecognized as being malicious while it's not and sometimes, uh, very rarely, a truly malicious file will not be identified as such. But uh, having tested uh, myjumla.com on uh, real-world hacked websites, I can say that it's uh, uh, pretty much the most accurate service that I found for Joomla websites. Awesome. Thank you very much, Nick. Okay, so um, there is another one. What what kind of logs are important to have to debug the hacked website? Do you guys have any information on that one? Um, sorry, what kind of uh, what? Of logs. What type of logs? Like system logs? Uh... Oh, what type of logs? Well, mm -hmm. if you are hosted on a cPanel server, the most important and the most useful logs that you can use uh, without any extensions for your Joomla platform are the raw access 
walk files. They are accessible directly from the cPanel and these are the log files for your domain name. They actually show all the requests towards your Joomla application. All the post requests, HTTP GET requests and a technician uh, who works for the support team of a hosting provider should be able to check them in no time and find the malicious request to identify how attackers actually access your website. Some other work files is, uh, are, for example, the JFAC guard has its own file, and when it blocks an attack, there is a record added to a log file, and the log file is saved on your account on the Joomla application. Basically, pretty much that's it, and uh, it depends on the attack. For example, if the attacker uh, has access to your account through an FTP account, then you should be able to check the FTP server log files. But um, these logs are not accessible uh, via the cPanel, you should contact your hosting provider or system administrator who manages the server for you. Okay. Uh, so there is another one related to automatic updates. Um, here it goes. If the hosting company automatically updates the Joomla core for your site, can you run into problems with extensions that no longer work once the Joomla core is updated? And what to do if that happens? Yes, actually that's a very good question and um, I would like to say that uh, we had such problems with our auto update tool and that's why our auto update tool automatically creates a backup of your whole website files and database prior to upgrading the system itself. So uh, we also have a checker and for example if we upgrade uh, 30,000 Joomla websites, then our checker accesses the websites and checks them if uh, for potential problems. And we can roll back the upgrade or the customer can actually restore the website by just clicking one button in the cPanel. That's it. The auto upgrades should also be able to be disabled, uh, I mean that you should be able to choose whether the system should upgrade automatically your website or not. Okay, and there is another one. Do you have any tips on how we can identify malicious entry or malicious code in our log files? Any specific tips on that? Well, I would say that uh, that's that's more uh, technically advanced question and uh, there are certain server level intrusion prevention and intrusion detection systems that could actually analyze log files in real time and send notification messages to site owners if a hacking attempt is detected. For example, uh, I know that uh, the Akiba admin tools uh, can send you a notification message if someone attempts to access your admin area and the login fails. That's that, that's correct, You're right, Nick? Okay. Yes, that's correct. Uh, if you configure yeah. it, and it also sends you uh, automatic updates uh, uh, by email if uh, there is a, a potentially malicious request detected that is being blocked by admin tools. Yeah. So basically. There are server level software solutions that can analyze work files and uh, then send notifications to you. But um, now that's not something that can easily be integrated uh, with the Joomla platform itself. For example, uh, a Joomla extension will not be able to check the FTP access work file or analyze the post and get requests from the raw access files but you can do it and uh, certain extensions offer such functionalities such as the Akiba Windows. Okay, and we had a lot of questions uh, from designers who have to manage multiple client websites and they have to um, 
remember many passwords. And in our presentation today, we recommended not using um, tools that store uh, your own passwords. Uh, so they were asking, people were asking what their solution in that case will be. So you, can you guys comment on that one? Well, I would basically I can say tell you what I'm doing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Just just tell them what you're doing, and I will then share my advice. Okay. Uh, I am using actually a password manager called One Password, um, and I chose that one because it stores everything encrypted. I'm using a fairly difficult to guess master password, which I rotate frequently. Uh, I will not tell you exactly how frequently is my frequently, but it's uh, probably more often than uh, uh, most people would do that. And the the important thing is how I derive this master password, which of course I have written nowhere down. It's only in my head. Um, I'm pretty much using what uh, you said in your presentation. <clears throat> I'm taking. Uh, an easy to remember phrase. Uh, I'm actually using the first letter of each word of the phrase and using some, some of my own padding and transliteration rules to create a secure password that's between uh, 12 and 16 characters long. And I believe that this is a fairly adequate uh, method of storing my passwords. Okay. Yeah, I, I would definitely agree with that. And I would also like to say that this is a matter of risk management. So if uh, you have uh, one whole database of passwords, it's uh, your own decision to, to actually decide how often you will change the passwords and the master password. Because the master, the master password that Nick mentioned is the most important thing. And as long as the master password is long enough or complex, you should be safe to go. Okay, thank you, Daniel. And Nick, uh, so there's another one. Uh, should the FTP settings in Joomla be enabled? Is it safe or advisable? Well, the FTP settings in Joomla no. functionality is for web hosts that use, for example, PHP setup that uses PHP as an Apache module. And when you're hosted on such server, you would like the Joomla application to upload the files through your main FTP account. Because if it's not enabled in this case, then the files will be owned by a global user on the server and other accounts will be able to access your files. But as long as you're hosted on a server which uses secure setups such as PHP runs as fast CGI and SuExec is enabled and processes are true rooted, there is no need to enable the FTP mode. That's my opinion and I believe that Nick would agree. Uh, yes, it's my opinion too and I would say that another reason not to enable FTP on your Joomla website is that your FTP username and password are stored in the clear, that means unencrypted, inside the configuration.php file in the root of your website. It's uh, very easy if you have um, an extension with a security vulnerability which allows the hacker to dump configuration variables from your Joomla website to get hold of your FTP username and password and from that point on it's game over. Great, thank you guys. And we have another one related to uh, permissions. Do you recommend that the index PHP, configuration PHP, and HD access file permission be set to 444? Well, basically, I would say that all files should be set to 644 because the first, the first digit of uh, this permissions is the one which is important and when suexec and uh, a secure PHP setup is used the file should be should be able to be executed and the web server should be able to read it there is no need to change the permissions of the HT access files or the index PHP files 644 is good enough but I personally recommend 444 for the configuration PHP just as another 
enhancement which could prevent uh, some automated attacks. All right. I would say that uh, the configuration.php file only needs 644 permissions because uh, setting it to a triple four will only slow down the hacker for 30 to 60 seconds uh, since it will be owned by uh, this user who is trying to write to it, it's very easy to change its permission back to 644 and uh, write to it. And then again, if you're a hacker, you're not interested in writing the file, you're interested in reading it. Okay, and uh, we have another one related to uh, to permissions. Uh, a client here has, uh, uh, an attendee here has a site running on a VDS, or I would assume that will be a VPS server, uh, with just one site, and his host uh, has PHP running as DCO and tells the customer that 777 isn't risky under these circumstances. Would you agree? Well, basically, I would agree under one condition. And this condition is for the web server, the process of the Apache web server or the Nginx server to be the same as the main FTP user of the account. Because if it is different, then this is a possible security problem. And 7.7 permissions should not be used, not only because for example, there are other uh, accounts on the server because in this case there is only one website, but because when you use 777 permissions, you basically give everyone access to your site. Okay. So my advice for this client is to contact the hosting provider and ask them if the web server process which runs on the machine is owned by the same user which is for the Joomla website and for the whole account. Nicholas, do you Joomla... have any comments on that one? I agree with that. And as long as uh, there is exactly one site hosted on the virtual dedicated server, then uh, 777 is, well, I wouldn't say OK. I would say possible. Um, if the uh, user account of the web server and the user account, the master user account of uh, this uh, server is the same. However, uh, I have not seen any VPS or any virtual dedicated server or whatever you might call it, having only a single site installed on, uh, on the server. So I would say that 777 in this case is uh, most likely not secure. Okay, and another one related to HD access file. Uh, I think that we've we've had that one on one of the slides, but maybe we should repeat it once again. Where would you place the HD access file for the admin login? For the admin login, uh, the HD access file should be placed in the administrator folder of your Joomla application. All so, right. I suppose that we are talking about the additional layer of uh, security which is provided by the second login screen. And if you create this from the cPanel, then um, the cPanel actually automatically creates an HD access file inside the administrator folder of the Joomla application. Okay. And one related to the SQL injections. Um, what SQL strings can someone inject through the website to return important information? And is there a tool to blacklist those strings or create a PHP script to use something like the grep function to ID certain strings? So essentially, is there uh, such a tool that, we, that people can use to block yes, there is. SQL strings? Admin Tools Professional uh, includes a feature which is called SQLI Sealed. Uh, it has a very big regular expression that took me uh, quite a few years to perfect. That uh, blocks about 90% of the SQL injections uh, that might happen on the site without throwing uh, false positives most of the times, unless uh, you have a form where you talk about uh, SQL injection and security. 
Um, well, the kind of attacks that someone might launch on your site regarding an SQL injection, it could be something from, uh, let's say, uh, selecting data from your database if there is a vulnerable extension, up to uh, creating a super user account uh, on your site without having to go through Joomla's user registration, without having to go uh, through the Joomla backend, and then he can log in to the backend of your site and manage your site as a super administrator, which means that it can also kick you out. All right. And here's another one which uh, is related to upgrades. When upgrading Joomla 1.5 uh, to 3.0, uh, one, one. Should it first be upgraded to 2.5 or can it be directly made, uh, can the, the, peep, the user directly upgrade to uh, 3? To well, three? basically my advice is to upgrade to 2.5 and then upgrade to 2.1 because this way you can actually uh, use automated extensions such as jupgrade that will upgrade some of your uh, existing extensions that you have uh, for Joomla 1.5 and you will be able to check the Joomla 2.5 website and see if the migrated extensions actually work and if they work for Joomla 2.5 you can then create a backup of Joomla 2.5 and you will know that they work for 2.5 but there are some cases when the additional extensions do not work if the site is then upgraded to Joomla 3.1 and in such cases uh, you don't have to start the upgrade all over again and upgrade again to 2.5 so uh, my advice is to to first upgrade to 2.5 and when you do it create a backup of the 2.5 system to uh, actually check your website and um, see if the additional extensions work as expected. It doesn't really matter that much, but uh, for big websites with a lot of extensions, some data uh, could hardly be migrated from 1.5, and that's useful to know. Okay, and we have someone who's experiencing issues with bogus user signups. So here's the question. We have someone creating bogus users by submitting the data directly to the controller. I cannot see uh, they are doing anything else besides this. Should I worry and can I do something to stop it? Well, I would say that uh, um, this webinar attendee should check the log files and um, identify, for example, the user agent or the HTTP referrer that make the requests to the website and based on the user agent and the HTTP referrals uh, he can block the, um, the, the person who is actually creating the bogus accounts. In addition, if these bogus accounts are created automatically by some tools, uh, he can add capture to the login page to the user registration form and uh, this way uh, to stop the registration of uh, such bots and spam accounts. Um, I would also suggest checking uh, which extension is handling the user creation because normally uh, Joomla's com users is uh, uh, using CSRF protection by means of a, of a token. So unless the bot is first reading the page from their side and extracting the token, it's not possible to directly post the form to the controller. If something like that happens uh, uh, to a controller of a third-party extension, then the third-party extension has a problem and its developer should be contacted. Okay. Um, and uh, let me see, uh, do we have any more questions? Um, yeah, so we had some people um, asking about security recommendations for Windows 2008 servers using IIS 7. Do you guys have any comments on that? I know that we are all Linux people, but maybe we could share some tips about Windows? Well, 
I would definitely say that um, if you're using Windows, then you should uh, first check the Joomla documentation about Windows. There are some pretty useful documents on the Joomla.org website. And uh, I would say that uh, if your server is a standalone server, then regularly update the Windows packages on it. And uh, if the server is part of a Windows Active Directory, uh, you should create security policies from uh, from the Active Directory and the domain controller of uh, um, of the system. Okay. Well, we have um, some more questions coming up, uh, and before uh, because there are so many, uh, and before I um, arrange them, um, here's another one. Um, that's probably more for um, Nick because I know that he's a Mac user. Do you have any uh, security applic? Do you use and recommend any security applications for Mac? Mm, I would recommend using Common Sense. Uh, on the Mac, you cannot uh, automatically install anything. You have uh, to either drag something to your applications directory or you have to run an installation package which always asks, asks for your uh, uh, for your password. So if you uh, start downloading things left and right from untrusted sources and find them, or if uh, whenever you see a password prompt you just gladly type your password without thinking, then uh, yes, you can be taken advantage of. Otherwise, it's, uh, it's very hard because uh, Mac, is, uh, Mac users are still a minority and there are not a lot of malware targeting uh, our platform. Uh, that said, I have tried running an antivirus application once on my Mac. I won't tell which one. Uh, the thing that I noticed is that my Mac suddenly became like uh, dead slow. So I don't think that Mac antivirus software is still on the same level as its Windows counterpart, and I'm personally not using anything. All right, thank you very much, Nick. And I think that we have time left for one last question, uh, which is, uh, do we have any uh, recommendations for hosts that uh, people should not use? Um, maybe Nicholas could share that because you've been and it's and it's we are not uh, going to finger point at anyone here, but you have a vast and broad experience with a lot of hosting providers. So maybe you could share your feedback with our users. Uh, well, there is one hosting provider uh, which usually sucks unless you go for the most expensive package. Uh, I don't have to tell which one it is. It's the one with the NASCAR advertisements. I believe most of our uh, guests here are from the US, so they know exactly what I mean. Uh, this is the one host that I would definitely stay away from. The other hosts that I would stay away from are all those that offer unlimited everything for $2 per month. Well, uh, you can't have unlimited bandwidth unlimited MySQL space, unlimited disk space, and what have you for $2 per month. These things cost. They cost real money. Last time I checked, there was no such thing as an infinite hard drive or infinite uh, bandwidth for free. So people just use your common sense and remember that if, it, if you don't pay it in the hosting price, you will have to pay it with your own time and effort and frustration. So for me, it's much cheaper to use even a, I don't know, a $10 per month or $20 per month hosting package than going for $5 per month hosting package. Which right. Really pays off. Right. And yeah, what I would, my personal take would be to uh, be proactive uh, in choosing a hosting company. And today we've been discussing a lot of things that we do here in our company as a hosting provider. 
Um, and we advise you to always ask other hosting providers whether they have mod security or how they actually optimize their servers for security and what they do to protect your own account. Like, do they isolate processes and all the stuff that we covered in the beginning of this webinar. Uh, all right, well, um, I would like to thanks again uh, to say a big thank you to everyone who joined uh, today. Joined us today, we had a very big crowd of attendants. Um, just a few last words. Uh, we will. We are still recording the session, so we will make uh, the recording available later on. We will receive a follow up email, and we will also upload the session slides for your future um, convenience. Don't forget to join us next week again when Nicholas will be doing a presentation about Akiba backups. Um, and uh, make sure to take advantage of our special offer today. Thank you once again and uh, see you next week.